Howdy everybody, it's me, Manning Mark, coming to you from the bunker system located underneath the art villa found somewhere in the jungles of the Midwest. And today it's glasses day. Oh man, it's just, I don't even, it's just, I don't even know where to start. I've had glasses for years now, but I never wear them. And I finally started, oh, I got bifocals and I bought the, the metal flexible uh, rims and special special lenses and all that crap, the the blended bifocals and all that stuff, little tiny glasses, lot really light, didn't want any weight, okay. And then it's like, oh, um, I can't stand to use the bifocals, okay. Uh, so I'm just like, uh, years. It's been what seven years? I don't know how long. It's been a long time since I got glasses, and I finally thought, well. There's a guy at work that had a pair of cool glasses, and he's like, go to iMart Express, okay? Because you can get two uh, glasses for like $70 or something like that. I'm like, okay. The last time with the eye exam was like over 400 or whatever. Anyway, so I'm like, I'm okay, I finally talked myself into it. And I go out to iMart Express. First I get online to find out where it is, and then I read the, there's only two reviews that's apparently been there. The reviews have been, are over a year old or whatever. So the first review, you know, was left by somebody that um, is in, you know, mid-tier management at iMart or something. Anyway, like, this is the best place. It's like going to heaven to get glasses. They treat you, you know, the best ever. And then the next review is, oh, it's this whole long litany of I went in and it was cold and the guy at the counter was loud and it went on and on. But basically they just didn't warm, they left in 45 minutes and so they had to fill up, the, you know, because they didn't like 45 minutes worth of well and misery. They left. It's the worst ever. I'm going to go back with the expensive eye doctor and get real glasses. All right. So, but there weren't, it, it, the place has been open and there's not, so you know that you shouldn't trust the best or the worst, and there weren't any more. So anyway, I go in there, and it's like, uh, it's the same place as Lens Crafters, which is the place I got glasses before I got glasses at the, the regular special eye doctor place, okay? And um, it's the same deal where they have the contract with somebody to do the design, so it's a separate, um, same building, but separate offices. They were very efficient, friendly, got me in and out of there. I had no appointment. I just went in cold turkey. Um, and, 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 and they were, they explained everything and they were really great. Now it was like about $80. Okay. So I, so I knew that the glasses were not going to be part of this. They're going to be more. So my friend must have, you know, gotten just the glasses. I already had the prescription, I guess. Subscription? No. You know better than that. Okay. So, oh, by the way, they're records. I got a few records at Half Price Books today. The friendly girl was at the counter, and she was just bubbling over with friendliness. Again, they just wanted to take her home with me, Manic Mark, and say, Hey, honey, I couldn't help myself. I brought home the cashier from Half Price Books because she's full of cheer and bubbliness. You won't mind much, will you? Anyway, okay, so back to the eyeglasses story. So I go over, and they have a big room. I'm looking through these eyeglasses, and there's really not that many to choose from, in my opinion, okay? And I'm not really seeing that many, like the cool ones that my friend has. They're not there. You don't, they don't have them, okay? So I look like I look, you know? It's like I'm just a guy. What? How much trouble could a guy be? So the woman comes up, can I help you? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know, I'm just looking. What's the deal? What do I do? Well, you pick out something, like, okay. Just put them out so you can remember what you got. The set them on. I go, all right. So I pick out a couple. Finally, after about 10 minutes, pick out a couple. And I said, yeah, motion her over. And she goes, well, uh, what can we do now? I said, well, these two. She goes, well, put them on. I'm like, what? She goes, put them on. And I went, put one on. And she's looking at me like this. And she said, well, that, those don't really fit you. I'm like, well, they're just the samples. So as she said, well, try on another. And so now I'm rushed to try another. Why can't I get... Well, apparently, not only do you have to pick the style you like, but you have to pick something in this limited selection that actually fits you, okay? So the frames are not only style, but the size and whatever works on your head that fits. So that cuts you down even farther. So what I had were these round, they were tortoiseshell, perfectly round, with the stems that come into the center. And I had those, and she goes, well, have you looked at the 
the metal frames. I just didn't want that. But I'd let it show them to me. Oh, no, they didn't. Oh, no. They she had another. Before we went to the met, round metal, metal frames, she had another pair of round. Um, the, with the, the, what do they call these, loose side or whatever. Okay, and I said, well, you know, the style is a little bit different. She goes, well, they're, they're kind of round. I said, well, no, they just don't have that vintage look. And then she took me over to the metal ones and showed me that. I said, no. And what's funny about this story to me, Manic Mark, is that back the Lens Crafters Day, 15, 20 years ago when I went, I had this exact same conversation with the clerk who was trying to help me out at lens crafters and I didn't tell them and I told this clerk I said you know with the totally round perfectly round not oblong not kind of round but perfectly round frames with the stems right in the middle it makes me look more crazy and she just looked at me and blinked her eyes and I said I'm just kidding about that but it's the vintage look that I'm looking for and these other almost round glasses don't have that and, and now I got to pick something else out so I was like deflated my everything out, she drained out, and she didn't really notice that. And she starts like picking. What about these ones? I, th I, I don't like those because they're not caramely looking like the ones that I picked out that I do like. And she's just looking at me like, oh my god. I said, I know. I can't help it. Nobody comes in here and asks for the vintage look. I can't believe that. Apparently they don't. So anyway, this is one. I didn't bring down the other pair. This is the only vintage sort of esque ones that I got that I kind of could accept. And the other pair, they're more of the little like modern hipster glasses. They're all right. They're uh, tortoise shelly uh, brown anyway. There you go. But okay, that's all right. So then she checks me out, and it's not like two pairs of glasses for sixty dollars. It's two pairs of glasses for two hundred dollars. First she said two hundred ninety nine dollars, then she corrected herself two hundred dollars and 99 cents I said what do you know? <laughs> what a knee slapper so she said well you picked the glasses from the more expensive glasses bait and switch no she didn't call it that but that's what I figured does it matter two pairs of glasses and a, and a decent eye exam still was far less money than seven or eight years ago whatever it was and I was I'm happy with the whole thing and why am I happy because when I went back an hour and a half later very efficient they were very efficient and I put the glasses on the store because she had to like just, I think you can tweak them, like bend them a little bit or something. She wanted to make sure they were sitting on my okay, face okay. Okay. And I put them on. I went, holy. And I didn't say the word poop, but I wanted to because I can't believe. I didn't go to, I did you know, it's every time I've gone to the eyeglass place, it's like, yeah, they, you can kind of see a little bit better. You know, I don't, I don't remember like this stunning clarity that surrounds me, even in the bunker system. <laughs> which I can, I, I can now sorely see needs a tidying up. It, it, I mean, I just, when I was driving, I was afraid I was going to wreck the Jeep because I was just so engrossed at looking at the sharpness and clarity and color and everything. It was that bad. My eyesight was that bad, and I didn't think it was that bad. But it, 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 yes, it was. Okay, now, were the, I, I dropped the other story. The only other story is, you wouldn't know it. There's no black and blue, and I, can, I would be able to see it now if there was. Oh, I didn't get I didn't get the bifocals because I didn't, and that's what she said. Well, they probably weren't they probably weren't something right. Or you shouldn't have had to do that. Like look up like this, like read like this. I'm like, oh, so all these years the the over four hundred dollar glasses they weren't even any good to begin with. I said I don't want bifocals. I just if I have to get reading glasses I just will. I just so everything like within if I have to read something now I flip them up. Okay, but now everything like with three feet or all around at all it's just depth of field. It's amazing. Now, on to the records. Now, in Half Price Books, I've just been there not too long ago. Wait a minute, I'm going to take a drink of this. So, what is it? Another. See, it's like, now, it's like you're like an old man. But now, when I do this, I can read. I can read up, up like this, just fine. Apple crisp. I was going to say, I dropped a 300 pound crate on my hand at work. I was helping. Three guys, four guys were picking it up. I was holding the dolly, and they picked up so fast, and the dolly with the bigger wheels got caught, and the thing slammed up, and my hand was holding it, and it was in there. I was like, ah, ah, and I fell backwards. It was like, eh, ah. and then they all laughed at me. It's at the end of the day. We don't care if it's broken. Go home. It doesn't matter. It's just a little bit stiff, but the feeling's coming back ever so slightly. Every hour, I get a little more feeling in it. Now, on the records. Half Price Books had some 10-inchers. 
in the 50 cent bin. Lost XE. Does that mean the key? Holy crap, sorry about that. Uh, it's probably not going to be any good, but I bought it because it's on red vinyl. <laughs> uh, this was it. This I had, I don't know why they wanted so much money for it, but because my friend Nancy's into Art Van Dam, and he's probably the best accordion player that I know because he plays jazz accordion. It's martini time, and I may have martini. I can't remember if I do or not. And a Jackie Gleason 10 inch, which I probably have, but I bought another one. One more 10 inch. Surprisingly enough, the Half Price Books, just a little, just an oddity at Half Price Books, which is a, a record booth record. So Raymond Lefevre, I think I've got this one because I kind of remember Raymond Lefevre doing a wider shade of pale, which is why I bought the first time around. I probably had this one and got rid of it. It's just, it's a local record, Randy Walsh. That strings a bell. Randy Walsh strings, strings a bell, rings a bell, ding dong, ring the bell. One of Errol's cheesecake covers. Did he have more than one? I have no idea. I'm just pointing this out as one of, it's living pianos. Why? Just because. To Les Brown, Francis Bay, I believe he came from. And this is an Omega cover that's highly interesting. It's another Francis Bay, big band covers album, but that building, which is so colorfully somehow processed in the background, I believe in the giant sphere with things sticking out of it. And then the guy here, that's he not, never mind, go on, okay. Charade, Henry Mancini, I have no idea. Cocktail, I know I have this one, I'm not sure, but I got it again because it could be Somerset. Somerset's logo is not on the cover. How odd. And last but not least, Something I picked up off of eBay that had been on eBay for frickin' years in my watch thing. And finally the record guy selling the thing uh, lowered the price. But still, he's, it's, it's this guy that ships priority mail, which is going to cut down on your the people interested because they're paying like 2 or $3 more for shipping. But finally, this record went from really high price down to something that was acceptable to me, Manic Mark, because of the cover. It's Watch Over My Little Girl by the Vibrators. <laughs> Living for the City, that could be good. Living for the City by the Vibrators. Might have to, I'm thinking, I'm gonna feature, wait a minute, feature something from the Van Damme Accordion album or the Vibrators, Watch Over My Little Girl. This one, probably a good chance. I'll feature something from this album. <laughs>